All right, folks, last attempt. These audio issues better be fixed. We tried our best, uploaded the video, and it sucked. The audio sucked. So we're back here to help you out. Hopefully sounding a little bit better right now. <clears throat> Had to go through a lot of hoops. Hopefully no dog barking. If there is, we'll be sure to shut it down. We're talking about the earnings reports to watch for the week of May 23rd. We're going to be a lot quicker now. Obviously because uh, we're shorter on time because, uh, you know, 30-minute video just failed on us. But here we go. <clears throat> so starting off the day, um, or really the week, I should say, on the 23rd here before open Monday, you're going to have a, a list here of a couple Chinese stocks, Xpeng, Niu, and China Automotive Systems. Xpeng, mostly, uh, you know, one of the big Chinese auto uh, EV deliverers. Pretty important because uh, the industry's been hitting select. Everyone in the EV segment been hitting pretty hard, especially these Chinese EV stocks. All, I mean, we're talking about 50% plus declines this year. It's been pretty rough. Um this will have an impact on those other stocks, so this is an earnings to watch if you're interested or if you have any of these companies in your portfolio or looking to add them. So we'll see what that looks like. Niu following them is an interesting one to look at. Uh, maybe I mean it's an electric scooter company, really just a small, small company, all things consider, considered. EV scooters. Uh, not looking great right now when you talk about uh, people not even allowed to leave their houses again in China. So um, not necessarily the greatest thing out there right now. But, uh, yeah. Star Equity Holdings, then QE, which, as we've discovered here, is Qbert. I mean, they just stole the the Qbert. I mean, just just let me let me let me let me just pull pull it up right there. Okay, look at him. Look at this guy. Here's Qbert. Here he is, right there. And then, you know what they did? They just made him. Instead of being himself being orange, they made the circle around him orange. That's pretty messed up, folks. Anyways, before after close Monday, we get into Zoom. One of my focus stocks today, because of the fact that it's been a garbage company over the last year uh, in terms of share price. Year to date down 51%, and the last year down 72, nearly 80% down from their 52-week high at 406. This thing has been getting destroyed in the last year, like no one's business. Um, and it's really because we've seen uh, slower growth than we saw in 2020, 2021, not unexpected. We see people returning to the office more regularly now. Now, a lot of companies still aren't forcing them because these uh, worthless employees that are pieces of garbage um, are so entitled they refuse to go back to the workplace. Uh, they have to do hybrid at a minimum. I mean, these people are so entitled. Get out of here, Gamma. Gamma Pe Puan, 144th birthday. What are you talking about? What's happening right now on my screen? Um, anyways, they're expected $1.07 billion of revenue. That is a 12% increase year over year from a Zach's, uh, Zach's estimate. We'll never use the Yahoo Finance because they're always inaccurate by quite a lot. And sometimes they don't even put the estimate on there. But uh, low double digit growth. Um, it's going to be tough to justify for a stock trading at a Price to sales uh, around eight at the moment. Um, it's going to be tough to justify, right? And especially when you talk about an EPS line that's going to be declining pretty uh, steadily this year. Expected to decline 33% this quarter to 88 cents uh, from $1.32 a year ago. Frankly, I don't think they hit on the 88 cent line either. I think this is closer to 80 cents um, in the low, uh, low 80s. Uh, low 80 cents is what I guess I would say. 80. Uh, 80 cents to maybe 83 cents would be a better estimate if you're talking from my perspective. So, uh, so yeah, not ex not really excited about Zoom, all things considered, because the stock's just it's still a little bit highly valued given the current market right now. I'm not talking about long-term prospects; those would be pretty good. But just just speaking for right now, Advanced Auto Parts, nothing crazy to say about them. Skyline Champion. Tough built. Now they make they made a mean work glove. I used to use their gloves at work. They did bust eventually, but they were pretty good while I had them. Pretty nice padding, uh, good grip on them. Pretty nice. Uh, nothing really to say about them though. America's Car Mart, no. Nordson, Walk Me, Euro Seals LT, LTD, Nautilus, and CSWC. Tuesday before open, we 
breach back into the uh, retail sector with Best Buy. Now, a little bit different retailer than the ones reported last week. This one's electronics focused, which is one that's going to be hit a little bit harder than the other ones, given uh, inflation and economic times. I mean, it's tougher for uh, these type of companies that are selling tech to perform when we're talking about high dollar items. Now, the real concern with retail is profitability, and I think Best Buy unfortunately falls into the same boat. I'm not a huge believer in the fact that revenue is going to be tanking. I don't see that being the case, but some people seem to believe it. I think the concern here more is profitability, and I don't think Best Buy hits on that. It's not necessarily the business model that is really resistant, um, I guess would be the best way to say it. Then we have AutoZone uh, following them. Nothing crazy with AutoZone either. Um, <clears throat> then if we take a peek at Abercrombie and Fitch and Polo Ralph Lauren both together, these are clothing companies, and we saw some not-so-great numbers from Kohl's last uh, quarter here last week. Um, primarily selling clothing, right? Abercrombie and Fitch, premium brands uh, with Polo Ralph Lauren. I don't necessarily see the greatest... Uh, greatest things I could expect there. I just don't expect great things. Meanwhile, a company like Petco is a lot more resistant to inflation uh, and really just uh, recession. It's a recession-proof business. People always have pets, especially in hard economic times. People get a little bit more depressed. So they get more pets in the house. We saw it in 2020. People were a lot more depressed. And not only do they get more meds because they're just handing out meds like candy sometimes, but they also got more pets, okay? Um, so it's a business that just, it just works. I mean, what, what do you want to say? Um, so, uh, on top of that, uh, we then have Canadian Solar, uh, Diana's Shipping, NetEase, Games, Dole. They make a mean fruit, recession-proof business there with Dole. There's no doubt about it. Um... There's no doubt about it. I mean, what do you want to say? City trends following them. Not a business model I love too much. We're talking about uh, more of a, uh, uh, you know, trendy type and trendy type clothing brand. Nothing crazy about them. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. After clothes, Star Bulk. Then we have Nordstrom Rack. Um, Uh, Nordstrom Rack, nothing crazy to say about them. Uh, at all, man, I don't know. Um, not necessarily the greatest. Uh, combine it with Urban Outfitters as well. You know, not necessarily the greatest things you, you want to mention here. Again, I talked about clothing. N not expecting too many great things. Into it, uh, prime tax season for them. It should be looking a little bit better year over year. But again, I I don't know. TurboTax is a good software, but it's just a boring company, all things considered. Uh, obviously, they have some security uh, security programs as well, but nothing crazy with into it. Um, Agilent Technologies, Toll Brothers, nothing crazy to say about Toll Brothers either, because you consider that these are very high dollar value houses. They're being built. We have a concern with the housing market, and if they say there's not, they're lying to you. Again, it's the same way they said inflation was transitory. These people are trying to make you feel better than, than you need to. But uh, anyways, the people who buy Toll Brothers houses are usually higher income anyway, so they're not necessarily as affected by, uh, affected by inflation or recession. Toll Brothers, they should be doing plenty fine still. Uh, but there is concern about the um, actual market itself, so keep that in mind. Grind Rod Shipping, uh, Calary's Live Ramp, and Arco. Before Open Wednesday, we have uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. Wait, I got to do a sound clip because it got distorted last time. Dicks. That one's going on the soundboard, folks. That one's going on the soundboard, um, as it should. Uh, sports retailer, sporting goods stores, nothing really I need to say about them besides the fact they overcharge you for everything, but that's okay. Sometimes you get some cheap deals whenever a player leaves a team and they're selling, you know, clearance out their items. I, I'm okay with that. Express, super group, then Scotia Bank. Uh, and we'll include them with, I guess, BMO Capital. We see, you know, uh, financials have done relatively well as what we've seen uh, so far as far as earnings. Baxter, then we have Make My Trip. Uh, 
uh, see uh, Columbus McKinnon, I should say, things I can't read, and then Photronics. Uh, then, following that after close, we've got NVIDIA worth mentioning because it's freaking NVIDIA. What can I say? How do I get this off my screen? Can I get this this thing off my screen? I guess I can't. Um, but NVIDIA's earnings, look, the stock, it's been schmammered. You look year-to-date down 44%. It's been rough for NVIDIA, but still doing well on the year. Down uh, or Up around 7%, all things considered. Expected 8 uh, 0.12 billion, which is massive. We're talking about 43% increase in sales and revenue this year, uh, or really this quarter. That's pretty massive. I mean, it's really massive to see this company continue to do it. We see concerns when you talk about overall video game market. This company's not just video games, obviously. We have obviously a new autonomous vehicle segment to it, but uh, uh, I think they'll still be doing great. And you look at the EPS line, this is what you see as a rarity right now in today's market 41% increase expected in the EPS line, $1.30 expected versus 92 cents of a year ago. A lot of companies are showing estimates of declines, and here's NVIDIA saying, boom. Now, all things considered, given share price, obviously this EPS line isn't massive for them when you talk about a P ratio standpoint, but this company is still, uh, in the grand scheme, still building out that profitability model and, and booming, all things considered, in that. So that actually is helping them uh, in the current environment. So I, I like it. I really do. I think NVIDIA beats both lines here. I really do. Uh, then we get into Snowflake and Splunk, both of these companies, and Box here. Look, these tech companies have just not handled this environment very well. I don't think the earnings can really help no matter what. I mean, I, I think we're going to see uh, sharp movements, but it could just be for a day. So decent earnings plays, all things considered. If you're looking for options plays, these three might be a good pick for you. Williams-Sonoma, nothing crazy there. New, uh, Nutanix, DXC Technology, Americo, Safe Bulkers, and Enersys. As I mentioned, look at Enersys. This is absolutely nonsense. I look at this logo and I say, what? This is Energizer. How is it not Energizer? Right? Look, look at this. Look at this logo. Is this not Energizer? I think I'm getting Mandela effect because I look at this and they make batteries. Then I look at the Energizer logo and look at this old Energizer logo. They had the line. They had the line. And instead of the G, it's going through the S here, which is exactly where it would go through. I'm getting... This is... This is outrageous, folks. They have the line. So there's we've uncovered a massive conspiracy here, and this company needs to get sued, and her sister needs to get sued big time, and I have chosen to be the lawyer in question that will partake in this case. Um, Thursday before open, we have Alibaba. Stock has been garbage really for two years now. I mean, this thing, heavily regulated environment, that's what's tough about them. Um, given where they're uh, based out of. But it's a really good business model. They're doing really well, but it's just the stock's not a great company. Buy the company, not the not the stock, I guess, you know? Macy's, I don't feel great about Macy's. Let's be clear with each other. We already saw weakness because of the retailer's earnings last week, but I don't feel great about Macy's. And I would include Dollar Tree and Dollar General in there. Uh, you know, I don't know what to say really about these type of businesses. They're just not necessarily... Look, I don't get the market here. That's all I can tell you. For me, dollar stores are meant for buying, you know, candy or something. You buy a couple items and that's it. Anyone buying a lot, the majority of their items at dollar stores are losing money. I mean, they, they give you nothing for what you're buying. I mean, they give you a lint roller that's a dollar, but it's got three sheets on it. So it's not worth it. Um, so don't, and actually it's dollar twenty five. you know, stores now. They're not dollar stores anymore. They lied to you. But yeah, um, then we have Buckle following them, luxury clothing brand, great stuff. Baidu, great company too, but also getting smashed, the Google of China. Uh, Medtronic, great company. Jack in the Box and Build-A-Bear Workshop. Then Burlington, not just a coat factory, Burlington, just Burlington. And their B is looking like a big old heart. Nothing else, nothing else. That could be peach related. Bef or after close Thursday, we're smashing it with Costco. We love Costco. Why? Well, year to date, look, things not doing great. 26% down. But really, the main story is in the last week, right? Because of earnings last week from Walmart, which is seen as a re recession proof environment, or a recession, recession proof company, an inflation proof company, 16% down movement just because of Walmart's earnings. But we look at the estimates for Costco, 
and it's not telling the same story. Expected to grow revenue by 14%. I think they easily hit that 51.76 billion. This company easily, in my opinion, does 42.5 billion. Just putting that out there right now. We're talking about 15% growth guaranteed. Um, I feel pretty confident in that because if you've ever been to a Costco lately or ever in your life, this is a foolproof business model that does very well. Then we look at the EPS line, and they are expected to grow 10%. Now, Walmart and Target, these, these companies weren't expected to grow. They were expected to be flat EPS lines, but tar or Costco says we're going to grow it, and I think they will. We look at the Costco business model, and a massive portion of their income, uh, or earnings, I say, should come from the membership fee. This is a 100% profit-free uh, portion of it. 100% profit free is the uh, income or the membership fee, I should say. Now, they typically run around 5 to 10% margins at any given store. So, item margins are not running the majority of the profit here, right? It's, it's, it's membership income, and that's not going to change no matter what inflation says. Um, so, I, I mean, I feel good about this. We look at the business model, and I, I buy into this, okay? I love Costco at these levels. I really do. Marvell. Um, uh, Zucaller, great. I mean, these are great companies here. Autodesk, Ulta Beauty, uh, another stock that's been less less fortunate last week. Dell, nothing great about Dell. We've heard negative things out of this quarter. I mean, I, I personally, I, I've seen some things that could be contrived as negative, but we will see what that actually looks like. Um, Gap. The most irrelevant clothing company out there. I don't know how they exist still. Garbage. Uh, Workday, American Eagle Outfitters, and Farfetch. Uh, you heard my piece on these clothing companies. You heard my piece. Then Friday before open, we have Canopy Growth. I don't know why the weed stocks are Im important. Uh, not to me. These are garbage companies. Big Lots, the company that I don't know how it exists. I'll say it again. I don't have a clue how Big Lots exists. Last time I went to a Big Lots, it was disgusting. It was vile in there. I mean, just nasty. It was just a disgusting mess, and it didn't. It just nothing was good about it. Big Lots is something that should have died in the early 2000s, or really, I guess, late 2000s, with some of the other companies. I mean, Sears died. How's Big Lots still around? I don't get it. Uh, and then we have Sanderson Farms, Hibbit Sports, and Viomi, and uh, uh, Pin Duo Duo. Look at me reading this. Pin Duo Duo. That's that's that that's that says right there. I can tell you. I didn't need to read the words. That's what I got for you. Hope you have a great freaking day, folks. It's better be better.